Je vais démarrer l'enregistrement. Ok. Jennifer, euh, on va pouvoir commencer après euh, ces euh, petits euh, problèmes techniques. Donc, euh, très euh, rapidement, je vais présenter Jennifer Safi, euh, qui est là euh, en visite euh, en premier lieu parce qu'on est en train de développer des partenariats avec l'Université de sciences de la santé à Porto Alegre, l'Université fédérale de, 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 de sciences de la santé de Porto Alegre au, au Brésil. Euh, dans ce cadre, Jennifer nous rend visite ici à Bordeaux. Euh, on a eu des réunions ce matin pour établir des partenariats et, euh, en recherche et en euh, enseignement. Et euh, Jennifer euh, euh, prend l'occasion euh, de présenter aussi les résultats de son travail de recherche dans son laboratoire concernant euh, la mutagenèse, les réparations de l'ADN dans un contexte de cancer. Elle va vous expliquer. Euh, et réellement, euh, Jennifer, euh, ça fait euh, maintenant 10 ans, plus de 10 ans à, à, à l'Université fédérale de Sciences et euh, à Porto Alegre. Avant, elle a fait un post-doctorat euh, en France, à Gustave Lucy, euh, en région parisienne, où elle a switché de la levure vers euh, le cancer, toujours avec un intérêt sur la réparation de l'ADN et la réplication. Euh, et avant ça, elle était toujours à Porto Alegre, mais pas à l'université. Euh, mais bon, euh, depuis, euh, elle a à Porto Alegre monté son équipe. Euh, euh, autre que ses activités euh, multiples chaque jour, euh, vice-recteur de l'université également, responsable des relations internationales, mais elle a quand même le temps de faire un peu de, de, enfin, de, de, de recherche euh, dont elle va nous parler aujourd'hui. Donc, euh, euh, merci beaucoup d'être venu, merci beaucoup pour ce séminaire. Il y a beaucoup de gens qui écoutent aussi sur Zoom, euh, plus que sur la salle, mais étant donné le contexte, ça se comprend. Euh, et euh, je, te, euh, je te donne la parole euh, à toi. Merci beaucoup, Jennifer. Merci, merci, Joseph. C'est un vrai plaisir d'être ici avec vous. Euh, bon, c'était... Euh, je suis un peu invitée en vacances. <rire> je suis en vacances en Pierre-Bordeaux. On dit qu'on a contacté Joseph. Il m'a dit, ah non, mais pourquoi tu viens voir pour donner un séminaire? Je dis, OK, on va, quoi. Puis, alors, j'ai désolé pour mon français. Et moi, je veux switcher bientôt pour l'anglais, euh, qui va... Qui, qui, qui n'est qui qui est pas bon non plus, mais je m'excuse déjà, mais je crois que si, 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 si quelque chose que vous ne comprenez pas, s'il vous plaît, euh, vous m'arrêtez. Parce que je crois qu'ici, quand on passe une discussion un peu euh, très amicale, on va dire, ce n'est pas, pas une histoire euh, très formale, j'espère. J'espère. Il a décidé de présenter un peu mon université et je suis dit que oui, un peu de la recherche de mon labo. Okay. Well, we will change to English now. No? Thank you so much. So I'm going to present you this clinical relevance of DNA repair modulation in colorectal cancer. First of all, I'd like to present my work. That's, it's, not very, it's not a very simple uh, 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 name to, to say. UFSPA, it's the University of, uh, University of Health Sciences of Porto Alegre. In Porto Alegre, we have, in Brazil, we have federal, we have public and private universities, and, and among the public, we have the federal and the state universities. My university is federal, so linked to federal government. We have 69 federal universities uh, where the students do not pay and fee, and, and, but our university is the only one that is not comprehensive. It's the only one that is specialized in health. We were born in the 60s as the faculty of medicine only, and then in the 80s, and actually, in fact, private, and then in the 80s, we were federalized as a faculty of health sciences, and then in, the, in, in 2008, we were transformed in federal university um, that now has 12 undergrad courses, 16 undergrad, 12 grads, but all, all related to, to health. So for those that are not very familiar to Brazil, this continental country. Uh, so Porto Alegre is here. This is, is the capital of the state. The, the, oops, the, 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 the very last state of Brazil, close to Uruguay and Argentina, but we only speak Portuguese. We do not speak English. We do not speak Spanish. 
Um, it's a it's a 1.5 million people. There are many universities over there. In fact, in Porto Alegre, we have two federal universities that are not very common. And here is our campus. In fact, our we are very small as university. We have only 5,000 students in total. Um, and here is our our campus. We have these main three buildings, and all of this other is a complex of nine hospitals. That is so. Santa Casa Hospital. It's a third level hospital, bicentenar, so 200 years old. We were born as a faculty of medicine in the 60s from these people that work at this hospital. Um, and then, so the students, you can imagine, they have this, they, they, they have, they do the internship, the practical courses all together. We run with the hospitals more than 60 medical residencies and multi professional residencies. And here, for example, this is the cancer hospital one of the most uh, uh, important, let's say, or that has this very well reputed uh, uh, hospital in, in the, not only in the south of Brazil, but in Brazil. So we have this transplantation hospital, we have a pediatrics, a cardiology. So I mean, the, all these nine hospitals are very, uh, uh, very well. Um, so this is my, my lab is here in this, uh, in this uh, floor. And in front of my lab, there is this, uh, cancer hospital. And when I arrived at the, at, at the university, as Jose told you, while I was working on DNA repair, basic mechanisms, and I said, come on, you just arrived from France, but you had a, such a nice experience. Let's try to do something with the people from the cancer hospital. It was not that simple as I, you can imagine at the beginning. Uh, so the, well, the fact that I, I had a student that knew a physician, a surgeon in the hospital, her father was being was being treated there, and they were friends. And this is how the, our collaboration with the hospital, with this group that I will show you, started. Um, and then, considering that uh, colorectal cancer, that in fact was the disease of the father of my student, so my student came with the with the, the proposal, Jennifer, what do you think? Uh, which, what, what about working with colorectal cancer? That is one of the most uh, important, I mean, the third the third most commonly diagnosed cancer worldwide. I mean, the sound of Brazil is very, very common because of, of the our nutrition made of this position of our people. Um, and then said, okay, let's go. Let's, let's, let's try to work with them. Um, and as you know, colorectal cancer is a very important disease. Um, Worldwide, uh, very it's a multifactorial, so they're familiar, but especially what we are exposed during the life. Uh, 70 cases of sporadic, but we do have genetic cases. And the uh, and the classical and the, the classical uh, model is that there is accumulation of mutations of tumor suppressors, several factors, and even repair mechanisms that give rise to the to the cancer, right? This is the classical adenoma carcinoma model um, that we can talk a little bit later. Epidemiology, if you compare uh, the cases in, in, in US and in Brazil, you will see that in Brazil, they, they, this, this estimated new cases is still high, almost 10%, and in women is very prevalent. And despite all the molecular efforts to give to, 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 to for the for diagnosis or prognosis, the, the 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 people are still still following the classical T and M staging system, right? For the colorectal cancer, T from the size of tumor, T from size of tumor, and from lymph nodes, and from metastasis, and this is and the and, and in fact the treatment and the prognosis has not been uh, uh, um, progressed lately in the in the last years for this cancer. If you, compare, if you compare with the breast cancer or ovarian cancer, that we, there are already very classical genetic markers that can really uh, change treatments. In colorectal cancer, we are still quite uh, in the, in the old-fashioned way, let's say. Of, of course, we, we did advance a little bit, but not as many as we would like. And there is a, a, a huge paradox. If you look at, so, so we have stages from one to four, but if you look at here, the paradox is that the people from the, the, the individuals with stage 3A, they have a, old, a better overall survival than individuals of stage 2B and C. 
and why? Because maybe this didn't be because uh, so it's not uh, it's except for some specific cases. It's still not generally generally it's not rec it's not recommended the the chemotherapy for individuals of stage two, but the, it, it is recommended for individuals of stage three. So that's why, uh, even if we know that stage two is, should be a better prognosis, the overall survival is still uh, very intriguing. So, and the treatment, when, the, when it is the case, the, 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 the chemotherapy is really based on DNA damage agents, right? So, thoracil, oxaliplatin, irinotecal, so that there are drugs that use different sorts of lesions. And of course, there are depending on the case uh, and on the stage, metastatics or not, uh, three, stage two or three. So there are other other things. But I will focus on this step because, because my lab work on DNA repair damage agents. Uh, immunotherapy, when, when there are uh, people with some specific DNA repair, DNA repair deficiency that I will tell you now. So I'm, I don't know if you are all familiar with this, with these repair systems, so I'll go very, very quick on that. Uh, but we have, if we can divide the, the repair mechanisms in error free or error prone, right? So these are all mostly error free. So uh, pathways that will uh, restore the, ge the genome integrity. So when we have lesions that are, so when we have single stem breaks, uh, we, we have. Uh, base excision repair pathway that is recruited. When we have mismatch, mismatch uh, in the DNA, so insertions or deletions that are done in replication, you, you, you have to, you, 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 uh, the pathway that is induced is mismatch repair, that I will talk to you later about that. The, uh, then we have double stand breaks repair that are the most toxic lesions, very complex mechanisms of, of uh, that involves lots of proteins, homologous recombination, non-homologous recombination, uh, and many others. And the bulky adults, this is, uh, these are lesions that are uh, that uh, are made by many of the chemotherapy drugs, and they they recruit mainly the nucleotide excision repair. That is also a very complex, complicated and complex mechanism. I will not talk to you into details, but the. But one thing that is really important is that, uh, and this is already very well known, that you, you can explore the, these proteins and inhibit some of these very or, or, the, or strategic proteins in the pathways. Uh, and that, that can break, that can stop the mechanisms of repair. And then by inducing several lesions, you can, this is one of the, the mechanism performed by stopping that you can uh, uh, kill tumor cells that replicate a lot. So that's why inhibitors of PARP, inhibitors of ATR or CHEC1 are very has been they are very successful. Uh, uh, like for for when when an individual has some uh, deficiency in one of these uh, uh, mechanisms. So for treatment response and prognostic. Uh, the DNA repair pathways are still um, uh, a very strategic um, approach. Uh, this is just to give an overall, to, for you to remind that if we look on the population, uh, we will always have a percentage of people that are so are called hippo, hippo reparators. So which means they would have a higher incidence of cancer because the repair mechanisms are not very efficient. But at the same time, they can they are more sensitive to chemotherapy. And on the other side, we have the, the, the individuals that hyper reparate, they have an overexpression of these proteins. But in this case, they can, they have lower incidence of cancer because once they are exposed to drugs, they will repair and do not accumulate mutations. But on the same time, they would be more resistant to chemotherapy. And all the time we'll have to deal with this uh, two possibilities. And the homo and the classical involvement of DNA repair and colorectal cancer is the mismatch repair, right? That, uh, and then I would like you to pay attention to these four proteins that are 
in green here, MLH6, MSH2, MLH6, uh, and MSH. So this, these two main proteins, and there are others, MLH1 and PM, PMS2. Um, so th these are proteins that are involved in the beginning of the, the pathway to recognize the lesions and then, uh, and then recruit other proteins. And the hallmark of, uh, and the hallmark, uh, of the mismatch repair and colon rectal cancer is the that the inactivation of one of these proteins, one or more of these proteins, gives rise to the microsatellite instability, the so-called MFI. And 15 to 20 percent of these radical cancers uh, have present some MSI, some instability, some low expression or some defects in the system. And what we know, and then the people that are deficient in the mismatch repair, they have a better prognosis, but they are resistant to spike chlorophyll. That is a, a very uh, classical drug uh, uh, based analog that is used in the chemotherapy. Uh, so then our lab, uh, so based on that, and the fact that there were there are still many gaps in the literature saying that, so what about the other DNA repair? What about the other, many others? And considering that we have also seen with other types of cancers, breast, ovarian, and lung uh, involvement of repair proteins. So what, what, what about looking at the other proteins in our calorectal uh, cancer patients? And so that's why Natalia, so the lady that I told you, my PhD student, started, uh, started her PhD, uh, PhD thesis together with Professor Antonio Calil, who is now that this is the guy that I told you before. He is he's our professor, surgeon, oncologist, now director of the of the hospital of the of this research and, and, and teaching at the, at the hospital as well. And two at that time, two residents, then later on started the PhD with, with us as well. And so we started then uh, looking for the expression of some of the DNA repair proteins in our patients and briefly, okay, so we have, we work only with these radical cancer patients. We search for gene, we did, uh, and then from the same patient, we collected samples from the tumor and for the normal tissue, about 10, 10 or more centimeters uh, of distance. And then we look for uh, uh, gene expression analysis, proteinase expression analysis, and then we correlate and that, that this is the collaboration with the hospital since the guy, the clinicians, they have a, a nice bank of clinical uh, data. So we analyze the expression of these proteins with the clinical data. So the first papers that we published was about, was related to the involvement of base excision repair. And we think and uh, uh, briefly now, I would like to tell you uh, a little bit about this protein. So basic excision repair has, uh, uh, has the, the, the pathway has the glycosylases that are enzymes uh, important to uh, take, to, to take the, the, the wrong base or the oxidized base or methylated base. And, and for each type of, each kind of base, there is a specific glycosylase like OGG1, MPG, UNG, so there are many proteins involved in the beginning of the pathway. And then you have the incisions, excisions, and the repair. And so I will not give you into details, short pair, long pair, bird. So we, we look for the expression of many or almost all of the main proteins involved in this pathway. And what we found, and then we compare expression in the normal tissue and in the tumor tissue. We, we, and we compare uh, by gene expression and protein expression. And what we saw is that many, uh, so they made the classical proteins of PER, so OGG1, MPG, so all these glycosylases and others, XRCCC is involving is a scaffold proteins involving the, in the end of the, of the pathway. All these proteins were overexpressed. This is a old change picture. So, either four or even more times more expressed in the tissue than in the normal. And also confirmed, and also confirmed by the proteins expression. And when we correlated with the clinical data, so that I will not go into details of that, uh, we, did, we did see a statistically significant correlation between overexpression of these genes and, um, and let's say 
worse prognosis. Uh, remember that I told you that around 50-20% of the patients of sporadic colorectal cancer patients, they might have some deficiency in, in, in mismatch repair. So we also looked at that. We did not see any difference, statistically difference between in, in the general, uh, in the M M MLH1 or, or 2, MS2, but we did, what we did was we separated the groups into the low expressors and high expressors, what, because we did see that 25, 10, 24% of our patients had either one or two deficiencies, let's say low expression of one of these genes. And then when we correlated this expression of the MMR expressors with the proteins that I just told you, MPG, OGG1, and so ever, we did also find, found that. So for MPG, for OGG1, and for PARP1, the low expressors had also a lower expressor, expression of this BER protein. So a, a quite imbalanced um, uh, uh, phenotype, let's say. Okay, this was the clinical part. And then we decided to, to, to work to, to see, so is there any implication with the treatment, with the chemotherapy response? So, and then uh, Natalia modulates two of these proteins, MPG, the glycosylase, and XRCCC, the, the scaffold protein, in one cell line uh, that is deficient in this match. You are probably all familiar with the cell lines, HCT116. So this is only to show you that she she oversaw. So how did she do the experiment? She she, she combined with the GFP protein, and then we and then she tested for fluorocell and temozolomide. We all know that temozolomide is not at all used for colorectal cancer; it's used for glioblastoma, right? Temozolomide induced ventilations and recruit BER, but why did they use? Because, them, because it recruits the pathway of David Seagull repair to remove the lesion. So, and then what she found here, uh, the first column is, is the, is the, are the results from the MPG overexpressed cells and here for the XRC one. And what we see is that the, the since the, 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 since these cells were transformed with the, with the genes, so we could only test it for 24 or 40 hour, hours exposure. Uh, but it, but what we, we did see is that the cells, the, the cells that overexpress MPG are very sensitive to 5 fluorocell, but not the XRCC1. If, but for temozolomide, this was very surprising that the cells overexpressing MPG were very sensitive to temozolomide, but not to XRCC1. And then when we look at the, then we decided to look a little bit at the metabolism of these cells, and, the, and we also saw a very, an imbalance yeah, of the cytosolic ATP levels all only on the MPG overexpressed cells. In, in the other, and remember that this is a, a, straight, a, a cell line that is deficient in mismatch repair, uh, that is overexpressing a base excision repair gene. So high cytosolic levels, but nothing with the, in the, in the uh, but nothing uh, in this XRCC1. This is a general idea. We did other experiments, but, but, but what I would like to tell you here is that, of course, this is a simple model. It's an in vitro, very basic monolayer uh, with many limitations that we know, but uh, we could, with that, we could, with this, Clinical, I mean, clinical approach and, and in vitro approach make a, a, a small model that we can say that if, when you have a basic excision repair imbalance in an M MMR, so mismatch repair deficient context, uh, and then with, and if you have an overexpression of uh, the beginning of the, the, the of a protein involving the beginning of the pathway. You and then you treat with temozolomide or 5 fluorocell, you would have a cell death because we did not see, a, we, we call, because the cells accumulate the damage, they cannot repair because it's, uh, you have an accumulation of single strand breaks, for example, high levels of ATP, and then this would drive, give, gives rise a cell death. 
And that could be an approach that might, that could be uh, um, uh, tested, let's say, or uh, uh, experiment in patients. Uh, and in X, in, but in, in the case you have a novel expression of a gene that we did see the case like this in our patients, in, when we come back to the, to the patients, uh, it doesn't matter if you treat with temozolomide or 5 fluoracil the cells, the cell will survive and no changes in the patient survive. So this is only to, to give you an idea that how, that sometimes in the clinics, we treat the patients with no sense. The patients, they, are, they suffer because all of, these, all of these drugs are very toxic. They, they have many collateral and you do not see any difference in the outcome. So that's why we should look more specifically on the genetic background. And then we continue using, then we continue searching by in other, other uh, repair pathways. So we look for the nucleotide excision repair because I just told you that the, the main drugs use, they require nucleotide excision repair. And we did, and we saw a very different profile. But we, what we did see is that a high correlation of the enzymes that are involved in the excision of the, of the DNA uh, strand, like ERCC1, XPA, and XPF. We saw a strong correlation with, uh, with the clinical, so like tumor invasive, half cellular differentiation, and so on and so on. But the main, the same uh, analysis that we did with the BER genes, we did not find here, so no correlation with mismatch repair, as we saw with the base excision repair. We also look on genes involved in double stand break repair, and then this is why I would like to show it. So the, my, my clinician, my surgeon, had. Uh, uh, decided to make his PhD in the field. He did not make a lot of, he did not make lots of bench work, of course, as you can imagine, but the clinical data and the statistics was done by him. So we look on many, many, and, and here it was, he looked mainly for the polymerase that I did not talk to you, uh, the transition polymerases that is also very indicated in cancer, as you know, uh, so polymerase H, polymerase Q, uh, K, H, and Q, and we did, and, and also methylation on the promoters, all, all of these days of the literature that we had already seen some involvements. And he, as he was, as he had, it was his patient, he was able to follow, uh, uh, to make survival course. So progression for survival and overall survival during the 60 months, and then what we, we did see is that uh, patients overexpressing CoQ had a, a, a better uh, uh, progression-free survival, not for the other genes, but also CoQ, uh, the methylation of the CoQ polymerase had also a better uh, survival, um, either progression-free survival or overall survival. We also check on the proteins, and this is, as you know, BRCA1, a very important marker in breast cancer. Uh, and, and not only breast, very many, many others. So not only BRCA1 is important, it's an important gene, but uh, this complex called MRN, uh, MRN complex that involves three proteins. And I would like to pay attention to MR, MRE11. Um, so what we know is that patients that have one deficiency in this gene, they have a kind of brackness phenotype, not only BRC. It doesn't matter if it has a deficiency in BRCA, but, but uh, if you don't have this pathway working well by a deficiency in this, you would have an, a very uh, accumulation of the, those strand breaks. And what we saw, the same uh, an, an analogy, we saw a huge uh, involvement of MR, MRE11, uh, BARD1 Bard and how B2, that is also a protein very well now, uh, very uh, studied in breast cancer. And here we did see a, a huge uh, correlation. I'm sorry about this slide, that is very complicated. Many, many, uh, many, many data, but I would like only to, to address the attention for the MRE11A, where which we found many, many correlation with tumor site, uh, tumor invasive death, nodal metastasis. But one thing that then we started to, to, to do more recently is comparing 
the laterality. So where is the tumor? Because for more and more, we have it has been shown that the right side column is more uh, of cancer is more aggressive than the left side. So when we when we compare and we also see that that uh, the correlation uh, uh, so MRE eleven A seventy four percent in the rectal ninety four percent in the left uh, sixty percent for the differentiated differentiated cells. Um, so we are now looking more specifically on this uh, gene uh, because we, did, we saw an independent factor, an independent correlation between this uh, gene and the, uh, the clinical data. Uh, the last two slides that I would like to show you is that uh, we then decided to, to do a, a deeper, uh, a deeper uh, study on laterality and Juliano work only with database, database uh, by checking more than 190, 190 DNA damage, uh, DNA repair damage uh, proteins and 600 synthesis of TCGA. And what we saw, if you look at here, uh, we saw, look at this. So the left and the rectal has have the more or less the same profile and the right side of the cancer had the, the opposite, let's say. So, and, and genes are, that are overexpressed in the right side column are much more involved with aggressiveness, with higher risk. And here you will see, and then we keep, keep look at the, at the proteins on BR, Franconi anemia, homologous recombination, mismatch repair, nucleotide excision repair, non-homologous enjoining and translational synthesis. Here in this dark gray uh, genes overexpressed in the right side of the column. So these genes, there are many that are overexpressed, are related to higher risk of cancer. And on the other side, these overexpressed genes in the left side are related to the better prognosis. Uh, and here, uh, what we saw is that the more genes, so more, look at, look at this. Left and rectum, the same profile here and the same profile here. So the low, so low, oops, sorry, low expression are so the low expression genes are associated with the survival on the right side. Low expression genes are are more uh, are more uh, associated with the survival on the right side. Look how many that here on the right side we have more genes, and then on the other side, left and rectum. Uh, have more genes with high expression associated with a better survival. So this is a, a figure that demonstrates the better survival of uh, patients that have expression of proteins, either low expression or high expression. And what we are trying to show here is that right has a completely different profile than left and right. So we cannot treat or look at the same patient independent of knowing so where is where is the localization of the tumor so basically the take home message that I would like to give you is that well there are many more DNA repair mechanisms or pro components besides mismatch repair that is the classical one the hallmark so we should really look more on the BER some of the proteins of the of the nucleotide excision repair TLS so uh, that's why it's, I have just now a, a student that's in Toulouse working with uh, a group that work on, uh, on uh, transmission polymerases uh, and, and in homologous population, MRE or 11, we do have and many of we do have evidence that it might it might be uh, a new marker. And if you look at these markers, so these are are markers that could give rise to a worse prognosis, but at the same time are potential predictive, pre predictive and prognostic biomarkers, but also potential to developing inhibitors, inhibitors of these proteins. And when you look on the laterality, so the left column and the rectal have similar expression profiles and probably share molecular similarities. The right has a different risk and the expression pattern than the other two sides. 
tumor location must be considering in developing and analyzing new drugs, for sure, even the selected subjects for clinical trials, because it's not only selecting patients, it's also knowing where is the tumor. I don't know if it's if it's doing it here ultimately, but in Brazil, it's still not in, the, in our clinical routine. Uh, and, and colorectal cancer affecting the right column should be treated as a different with neoplasm for tumors with the left origin effect. So this in general, I had to be quick, but in general, this is uh, what we are doing together with the hospital. So this is my team in the in the, ba the bench. Here's the bedside, the surgeons, and here are my collaborators in survey. Now, Professor Jean Sebastian Toulouse, that I told you that's working with uh, uh, polymerases, uh, translation polymerases, and also my colleague from the other university. So, of course, funding is very important. We have only national funding. Hopefully, we, we can have more now. Uh, this is my group. But this, during the pandemic, we had to work like this. It was quite hard for the students that needed to go to, needed to, go to the bench. Uh, and this is Porto Alegre, that is the city that has one of the most beautiful sunsets in the world, I would say. <laughs> and that's my favorite team, soccer team, that is international, Le Rouge, Le Rouge. So thank you very much. Let's see about who. Okay. Sorry, if I was too Can yeah. I ask a small question? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, it's very interesting. The relation between the molecular oxidation and localization of the tumor is basically related. I had one question about uh, about the uh, because I know in the optical side you work on uh, metallic molecular analysis of the white light cancer, but also for gliomas. And we are familiar with gliomas. This is quite surprising the effect of chemolosomide on MMR deficient disease because normally for gliomas, the best outcome would be for patients which are MMR proficient and LGNT methylated tumor. Yeah. So this is a bit surprising as compared to the gliomas. Did you, did you investigate in the relation between ectopic expression of uh, your NPG protein and LGNT? No, uh, LG, LGNT we did. Uh, oh, it's a shame that I don't have it here. We, we have in the paper. Uh, we have in the paper that we published in 2017. But they, they, they were, uh, we, we did not find any relation with that. So, this is the point. That's what uh, so, yeah. yeah, so it's another mechanism, but, but we should investigate it more. So, we have the clinical data, but we did not investigate it in the cells. What was the expression of the NGOT? If, 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 and we call the rectal cancer with and that should follow. I'm not very well, not following recently. I think I heard something about this also in Hong Kong. Yes. They are now so looking at that. How is the study now? Mm -hmm. uh, but that might be an interesting drug, but it really depends. So we really need to know from the genetic background of this patient. And we shouldn't, we shouldn't only use, because it's a very aggressive. So at home, if you have questions, you can raise your hand on Zoom, otherwise I won't know. Um, I have a, a, a couple of questions. Uh, so technical uh, question, technical detail, when you did the uh, Analysis of the biopsies and have the control tissue yes. uh, about 10 centimeters away. Is that also colorectal uh, tissue? Yes. Uh, similar? Yeah, because there is all the pathologies in the room of the surgeon okay. that is looking on the uh, hematog uh, on the staining. So it's it's reconfirmed twice even. So, so they, they the check where the control biopsy during the surgery, there is a pathologist in there that that. Uh, look on the microscope and it's sure that it's a tumor, is a color, is a column. And for the tissue, normal tissue. Normal tissue. Normal okay. tissue as well. Uh, and really, that, uh, is it possible for you to uh, culture cells from the biopsy? Right, because that was... I, I saw you had like HTC, yes, 16 have... cells. Yeah. No, the, the plan was having, yes, sure, we would like to, and then we have the protocol. Yeah, we have it, but it's not very simple to, to cultivate because of contamination. 
uh, not very simple to bring yeah. to the especially in the column. So, okay, uh, especially in the column. So uh, we decided not to invest a lot at that time. Yeah. But it's one of the things that would be very interesting, of course. And then of course I have but a question. expert on that. Yeah, I'm going to ask you to speculate on that uh, right left. Uh, difference. Yeah, I imagine like the histology and even the function. Sure, uh, embryology did they are embryolo embryologically different already. The left and the right. That's not one of them. It's one of them. But uh, so my question is, um, how does the the histology and the function and the difference between left and right co connect with DNA repair? Because you would have to imagine that. There must be differences in terms of gene expression yeah. of proteins involved in DNA repair. Um, have any, uh, how does that? No, I that should make for the, the paper. I have to check, even for the discussion of our paper, that is not yet in the. Topic. Another uh, must be. I don't know. If, uh, I'm just going to speed this out. Uh, pH differences or. Uh, because the interesting there are, I know that there are, but I cannot, I, I, can, I don't have, have now the complete answer to give there, you. There might be also microbiota differences. There, there is, this is another point that people are also asking me to, to collaborate by looking at the microbiota. This is a very important point and also implicated in, in DNA repair. Um, yeah, microbiota but, might have information. Yes, that's um, yes. Absolutely, absolutely. But the thing is that, and, and, and it's really required research. In the last three, four years at least, we have many papers coming reporting that uh, the right side column is so wow. Oh, Let's give right. attention on these patients because this is sort of much worse the outcomes. Uh, but in fact, uh, related to anatomy and, and the, the so the normal physiology. The yeah. Normal, uh, yeah, they should have a better look. Good point. Yeah, because you start talking about the classification number from uh, 2000. Yeah, CMS one. Yeah. 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 I was just wondering about the about, about your lower express and high express. Which kind of CMS do you have? Yeah, CMS. CMS one. Oh. Yes. Yeah, we look at that. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, I had that slide that I had already, and I decided to cut. Yeah, it's a CMS one. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Question. Do you know to different uh, stages of immune cells in the different sites of the because in the stand you have the day of leeches? I, I don't know. I need to uh, look at the uh, chat. What sort of for the, for the last for the game chat? The was generating their proteins for this last data that I showed you. Look on the look on the look, look on the rise, look, look on the and you see the sort of relation with that. Would be good one. See the deep investigation yet, but I am sure that this is the way. Then we should go because, of course, you know that, that it's very integrated to that the immune system and the that's why also the mismatch with the deficient rates patients got this from the reality, you know, that and the DDLs, DDL one. And this is also something that we need now to focus on, especially because, uh, especially for the metastatic people, but not only. Not only it's, it's the more and more we should look more, we should compare, we should uh, combine uh, this analysis of not only looking at the DNA repair, but also the immune system. Well, that's my name. Yes, this is No, we did not. We did another. Uh, I don't have the results here yet, but there is a project from the in process, we look only for metastatic, liver metastatic related to colorectal. So, so we 
This is what we are doing now uh, we are on the fighting the defense. So we so we should look on our forms, right? Because we have our our people, our population, they have different basically a genetic background. So we should look on our on our different uh, countries and see if we have the same the forms, the different forwards, right? So we need to make to make a big database of that. So, Especially in Brazil, you know, in Brazil we are not very, we should also go back to our context, our, our Brazilian context, but it's not, it's not very easy, especially in the case. I would that, imagine the genetics in Brazil is very easy. It is, absolutely. Yeah, uh, in, but in the South is different, we are very Germans and Italians, very Poland, very European, but if you go to the North, it's going to be more in Africa, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, we, we are very mixed. Absolutely. And so that's why. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Okay, thank Thanks you. Thanks a lot. Jennifer, thank you very bye much. Bye bye. I think I'm going to. Thank you. Excellent.